Hi guys, welcome to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about protecting your positive mind. Now guys, this is the seventh video out of 11. So if you haven't seen the videos already, you can look below in the description section and you will have all of the information that you need in order to view all of the other videos. Now in this video specifically, we're going to be talking about protecting our newly positive mind, which is kind of feeding off of the other video. But not to worry, if you wanna watch this video first, you definitely can. It can stand alone by itself. Just as a side note, and to help you guys get empowered about the degree that you need, I am having my first ever scholarship of $600, and that is for LPNs or LVNs that are looking to get their RN or BSN, or RNs that are looking to get their BSN. So if you don't have your BSN yet, definitely check it out. You can fill out the form. There's no strings attached. If nothing else, you can talk to an individual that can help you map out your future. With that said, let's get right into the video. I'm so excited for you to watch. Step number seven, how to protect your new positive mind from your negative coworkers. <laughs> so I'm sure that you have noticed that there's quite a bit of negativity in the healthcare environment. Now I know that you yourself are not negative, but those that you work with can be very negative. I will never forget the very first time that I came to the hospital for clinicals, I was going to labor and deliver a unit. And my instructor said, you're going to be with this nurse. And she was like pushing me towards this nurse. and the nurse just looked at me with a very mean look on her face and as soon as my instructor walked away she said two things to me do you smoke and I looked at her kind of astonished I was like do I smell like smoke or does somebody smell like smoke or uh, no not at all and then she said do you drink coffee And I said well yeah just a little bit like maybe one cup in the morning every now and then and she said if you want to be a nurse then you better start now and I promise you that she turned around and I almost never saw her. I did see her out of the corner of my eye a few times, but that was it. So that was my first nurse that I ever had an encounter with. And let me tell you, that feeling stuck with me for a very long time. I questioned myself so many times after that interaction. Am I doing the right thing? Is nursing really terrible? I mean, I remember I went home and I actually started looking online at like other schools, which was freaking my parents out because they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're in nursing school, like just finish this. And I was like, I don't know if this is what I want to do. It had such an impact on me that, I mean, I wouldn't have quit, but you know, I thought about it. And as you can imagine, she was not the only negative nurse that I came in contact with while I was in nursing school. And so I kept, I kept, you know, having these interactions with nurses that were quite honestly miserable. And so again, I'm questioning myself as to whether I'm making the right decision. But then you have those nurses, I mean, those real gems that just absolutely love what they do and they make it look pretty easy. So thankfully, I was paired with a nurse that worked in the PICU for my rotation, which I was going to spend three months with that person, basically be on their shift for three months. And thankfully, she was a really positive person and she helped me believe in nursing again because I really had lost a lot of faith in it. But she was a very positive person and I learned a lot from her on how to deal with people that are coming at you in a negative way. So here are some things that not only did I learn from her, but I also kind of started doing my Myself because I you know as I've been a nurse for seven years I've learned kind of things that work and things that don't work so here's some of the things that I do the first thing is I never ever go to work with the intent on changing anybody else this life experience that I have ultimately it's my experience I can't change anybody else I have no control over anybody else so the other belief that I have is that the way anybody approaches me can only have a very small impact on me and when I say impact it means that I'm going to think about it, but I'm not going to accept anything or I'm not going to take anything to heart that doesn't really make sense. So for example, let's say you need a co-signature for insulin. Well, let's say that it's a very simple thing. Usually, I don't, I'm not sure how your system is at the facility where you work, but usually you just check the medication, check the blood sugar, and that's it. Some nurses make a really big deal out of it and act like you are you know, asking them for a $500. So they might say things like, oh, is that all you need? Or can you see I'm in the middle of something? Or you know, something along those lines that's very negative. So the way I deal with it is I come from a very, very, very calm place. So I have kind of trained myself that when I feel that anger build up, it's, it's not gonna help if I let it out. It's not 
not gonna do anything except make the situation worse. Because the person that is that angry when you're asking them for something that small is the type of person that can go off at any second. And it is my first and foremost priority to get away from that person as much as I can. So I come from a very calm place and I just say, if you're busy, I can ask somebody else. So I just come from a real sincere and calm place. Unfortunately, the way the nursing profession is, we need each other and there is no doubt about it, we cannot do this by ourselves. So we have to find ways to work together and that is one thing that I do. I use the same type of process when I'm approached by anybody that's negative, whether that be a negative doctor, a negative director, a negative nursing assistant, or anything of that matter. So just the other day, I was speaking with a doctor and I was taking a telephone order and I was just repeating the order that he gave back to him. And so I said, okay, so you want me to give 10 units of Humalog insulin sub Q three times a day before meals. And he yelled back at me, when else would you give it. <laughs> And so I just stayed very calmly and I said, state the fact that is correct. I say, we usually give it before meals. And of course he yelled again, well then give it then. And I said, okay, I'll give it then. In my voice and in my physiology, I just don't let anything really affect me. So here's another example. There was one nursing director. There's, you know, a few nursing directors that are really just kind of not nice people. And so she has the habit of kind of calling you into her office and you sit across from her and she kind of lectures you on something so she called me into her office one time and she said that I I forgot to do something one day or I forgot to just document it and night shift caught it and they said that that shouldn't have happened so the way I dealt with her was I just stayed very calm and I said you know there is a lesson to be learned here because that is something that I'm supposed to do and I don't think I forgot to do it but I could have potentially forgotten and obviously I forgot to document it if I did it so I just stayed very calm and I said okay okay, I'm, I'm learning this lesson now. I'm going to act differently from this point on. And I think that this caught her like a little bit off guard because she's usually used to people like arguing with her. Like I didn't do that or you know, that's not the truth or whatever. But for me, it's just not about that. It's just about learning the lesson and just saying, okay, well, this is really important to pay attention to and I'll pay closer attention to that. So I just said, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll do that, no problem. So here's how I dealt with a CNA that was kind of giving me a hard time one day. Um, I was really incredibly incredibly busy. I received a patient that was post-op. I had other patients wanting or needing medications. I was just really overwhelmed. And so I asked the CNA if she would clean one of my patients because they needed to be cleaned in turns. And I just couldn't do it right then. And so, you know, she said she would do it. And I go back into the room thinking that this was already done about an hour later and the patient is in the same situation. I have to be really honest with you, I was livid at that point because I let the patient stay an extra hour the way they were when they needed to be changed right then. So immediately, I just, I wanted to find her and yell at her. I said, you know what? What's most important right now is this patient that needs to be cleaned up, that needed to be cleaned up a long time ago. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take care of the situation because my patient is my priority right now. And so I did it, I cleaned up my patient and then I went to find her and I said, you know, I understand understand that if you can't do it, you can't do it, but please tell me because the patient stayed, you know, that dirty for so long. Now she was a very difficult to deal with person and ultimately I think that she was fired because she would make promises like that to everybody and actually not do anything except vital signs and blood sugars. So, you know, you're going to find yourself working with people that are going to do almost nothing to get by, but you really just have to hold yourself to a higher standard and just asking yourself what is important right now and that's it. If you do need to, you can take it a step further of course and speak with your director. I usually take the approach of just doing my best to get everything that I can done and then helping out other people. Um, it makes me feel at peace to kind of go that extra mile. Um, a lot of people will say but if you go the extra mile people are going to take advantage of you and I will be the first to admit that I get taken advantage of a lot. However I also get elevated a lot which means that if something comes up that is a good opportunity I usually get offered that opportunity. For example I got offered this opportunity to create this program because life sort of elevated me. So you never kind of want to think in those terms like if, if I do this good thing it's just going to get worse because 
that's not the way things will ultimately be. You cannot do good things and never see any good things come from it. Positivity follows positivity. And that's really just the way it is. Okay, so that was the first lesson on ways you can respond when negativity comes your way. Because remember, we all have to work together. We need each other. The other thing is avoidance. Now, this does not work perfectly because sometimes the facilities are small and we have to you know, constantly run into each other. But if you look around, you will find opportunities to avoid the negative people. For example, let's say you're walking in to take your lunch break and you notice that the negative person is sitting right there. You could just act like you forgot something. Like get that universal like, oh, I forgot something look on your face and turn around and walk back out and wait for them to finish lunch and then go eat your lunch. I promise you, you will enjoy your lunch so much better if you're not sitting with that negative person. Another avoidance tool is let's say there's a nurse or a doctor that you really want to avoid and they're walking down a hallway is you can act like, again, you forgot something, turn around and start walking the other way and take the scenic route to where you needed to go. So avoiding the negative people is really just a great way to kind of like calm your mind and to also have some fun while doing it. So you can be like, you know, a little MacGyver or a little, or a little sneaky or something like that. So just, you know, have fun with it. So another thing is if you have coworkers that are constantly saying negative things, now this is kind of similar to the metaphor, like, it, but it might not be a metaphor. It might just be a sentence like, oh, I'm tired or all oh, the stinks or this patient's so hard. One really easy tool that I use to help myself through those times is I replace that sentence in my head with the positive opposite. So let's say that the nurse said, oh, this patient is so difficult. Then I will say to myself, I am so lucky that all of my patients are super awesome today. Or if somebody says, oh, it's only four o'clock, then I'll replace that with, wow, it's already four o'clock. I can't believe it. There's only a few hours left. So these are actually things that I will say out loud, but what I will do is I will say them under my breath as I'm walking away from them. So like I said, just what you want to do is take the negative thing that they say and then say the exact polar opposite, which is probably super positive. And that will help you first of all laugh because it'll be ridiculous. And then second of all, it will clear your mind from the negativity. And of course, if they say any negative metaphors, make sure re you replace that with a very positive metaphor. So your exercise for this step is to write down two incredibly negative things that coworkers have said to you that, I've, that I know you would never say, but somebody else would say. So write down something extremely negative and then write down the polar opposite it, which is probably ridiculously positive. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.